Hello again, this is my mommy's post and we're back again. Today we're gonna talk about uh, postpartum depression, um, which is usually referred to as the fourth trimester. Um, this is this is going to be a topic that's um, I really wanted to shed light on. Um, it is a very important topic. It's a very sensitive topic, and it's typically a very touchy topic. People don't want to talk about. They are um, perhaps don't have the right support. Perhaps they don't have enough knowledge or don't understand what's happening with their body and their changes. So. I really wanted to make a video that just reflects these um, questions and these issues and kind of how we can help navigate women into the right direction, um, help talk about it, help um, women be confident about what's going on and just take control of your body. Um, there is m several factors that go into postpartum um, depression or prenatal depression or as we call it the fourth trimester. I personally am not an expert but I did invite my dear friend Elena Brooking. She is a NLP practitioner. She's a personal coach for the fourth trimester personal care and helps with postnatal um, depression. So I asked her five questions and I had her do her video so she can answer these questions for us. Um, I just compiled these questions. I know these are the several questions that I think that would be beneficial for everyone to kind of understand what prenatal depression is and how to navigate through it and how to understand the symptoms and the signs. I personally um, went into my pregnancy with a fear that I am going to get postpartum depression. I did deal with depression when I was younger. I never understood what it was. I didn't have the supports that I needed to navigate through it. But as I got older, um, I kind of just struggled with it. Um, I luckily had my sister who was my support and we both went through it together. We both kind of talked about it and never understood what it was. We just thought it was um, a feeling that was normal. It just came, you know, it rushes over us and then it just goes away. Um, sometimes it'll last for minutes, sometimes it'll last for weeks, and it just depends on um, the situation um, and what triggers it. So I dealt with it as a child, I, and eventually when I grew older, I realized what it was. Um, I personally didn't go to therapy, but my sister did, and she did heal. Um, I just dealt with it in my own ways. Um, I was very much aware of it, and I helped myself heal through my own personal process. So I know there's a lot of tools out there. I know there's a lot of resources out there to help navigate. Um, moms who are vulnerable or who do experience these uh, type of types of symptoms um, we don't like to talk about it because sometimes we feel as if it's a um, a disability or something that we should be ashamed of but it's very much uh, very important it's part of it's part of our body the emotional part of our brain is part of our body so if it is broken we need to heal it just like how we would heal a broken bone in our body and that's kind of how I look at it um, I really wanted to talk about it because I did go into my pregnancy um, going into grief because I lost my sister and I really thought that I was going to experience it. Um, I did tell my partner that I, um, just to look out for symptoms, if sometimes I am not aware of the symptoms, because when you're, when you're going through pregnancy and you're going through um, postpartum, you really don't have time to self-reflect about your actions. And sometimes you don't have, the ability to, to take a step back and go, okay, what's going on with me? Why am I acting this way? Um, you know, what's, um, is my mood changing? Is my behavior changing? So I really told him like, 
Uh, can you just please look out for any um, clues or any changes or any mood changes if I am not aware of and let me know and, and help me navigate through. So lucky for me, I do. I did have a really good support. Um, he's such a great support in my life. He's um, has been helping me through um, pretty much navigating through the emotional part of my journey and I couldn't be thankful that um, he is the right partner for me to go through with this. So, so I was very self-conscious about it going through, going into pregnancy and then going into postpartum for that reason. And I, after, after going into, um, after delivery, I did, um, just read a lot of the boards of moms and how they are struggling with postpartum and some of them don't quite understand what's happening or don't quite understand why it's happening. Some some women do, some women uh, know the symptoms and go right away to their um, OBGYN and they help them either get them on through therapy or on, uh, on medication. So it's very important to be self-aware to help um, get a stable environment and always talk to your doctor um, no matter what the situation is. Another thing is that I did go through postpartum. I went through my fourth trimester. I was, um, I think I did well. And then right about six months, seven months postpartum, I felt like a bus hit me. Um, I did experience some uh, depression I, and I just came out of nowhere because I was not expecting it. I just felt that I didn't want to do anything. It was crippling. Uh, just just the normal um, depression mood swings that I would experience. I just didn't want to do anything. I, I didn't want to leave the house. Um, it lasted for a week and I remember telling my husband that I am dealing with this um, I, and I don't know what to do and he ended up talking through it, helping me, support me with the baby, supporting me. Um, we went out on a couple of days. I um, did a change of uh, scenery. I went to the beach. It was summertime, so I went to the beach. I, I did things to help me get out of that funk and I just personally know how to get out of that funk and it, and it just went away. It was never to the point where I wanted to harm my baby or harm myself. It was just like... I did not want to leave the house. I did not want to um, interact with other people. I just wanted to be home and um, and not be motivated to do anything. I did not want to, I had so much to do and I just did not want to do it. And so that caught me uh, off guard and I was able to, to walk myself through it and get myself out of it. And my husband definitely helped with it too as well. So these are just a couple of things that I wanted to talk about and highlights. I will uh, go ahead and list the questions and, and plug in uh, Elena's uh, answers to them, okay? Hello there, mamas. Elena Brooking here, personal coach for your fourth trimester postnatal care and NLP practitioner helping moms going through postnatal depression and helping them heal so they can start enjoying motherhood. So the baby blues, the baby blues usually kick in um, after two to three days um, when coming back from hospital, you are basically, you know, entering and transitioning into your new life and into motherhood. They are usually um, characterized by mood swings and irritability um, due to obviously the shift on the outside world, um, you know, and having to take care of a little baby and also the shift that happens inside of us as women. There is a massive drop in hormones and there is a change in chemical um, chemicals in our brains. So usually what we what happens is we feel really moody one second. We're very proud of being mummies and we think we're doing such an amazing job. And then in a matter of seconds, literally, we go through, you know, a feeling of not being fit and not being up for the task. 
80% of moms usually go through postnatal depression, uh, sorry, through baby blues. So it's very, very common. It usually lasts from one to two weeks. But as we are so different from one another and each one of us has their own story, um, I would say probably it can happen also um, that it, the duration of it can go up to, let's say, three to four weeks as well. Now, if the baby blues continue after that period of time, then we are literally walking into depression and anxiety at most of the times. Um, what happens is that um, mood swing and that irritability and the feeling of not being fit to be a mom carries on through um, after the baby blues. And what happens is we feel hopeless, we feel unworthy and unfit, as I said, and we just don't want to do anything. We don't have any interests. And uh, we, we are just feeling really, you know, overwhelmed altogether. And most of these feelings are then followed by anxiety and panic attacks. So the uh, reason why perinatal anxiety and depression happens in women so while they are pregnant is not actually known uh, officially however there are a few reasons that I'm going to separate and divide into two different categories the first category is psychological and it's a social as well risk factor uh, which means you are more likely while pregnant to fall into depression and anxiety. Um, and these reasons could be could be related to uh, a woman's story in life. So I would probably say, you know, current or past sexual abuse. It could be related to a lot of pressure, you know, to be a perfect mom. It could also be, re or even just, you know, the pressure that we get from anxiety every day as well. Um, or even just, you know, uh, the um, having a complicated pregnancy, um, you know, maybe a pregnancy that is unplanned um, and that was maybe unwanted. And, you know, um, even just... Um, pregnancy at such young age such as teenagers going through you know i think 50 percent of teenagers um, who do fall pregnant um, go through through perinatal anxiety and depression or even just lack of sleep because of a complicated pregnancy as well as um, you know not having the support from family um, friends or um, even you know the partner so these could be risk factors that are related to psychological and social um, you know life the other category um, is related to the biological side of things and it's usually related to um, like family history so um, family um, history, you know, relatives or family, past family with um, uh, diagnosed uh, mental um, disorders like such as depression, bipolar disorder. Um, it could be anything, obviously, that is carried on. Um, you know, so even just anxiety. You know, if we we underestimate how much anxiety is common in our um, society nowadays and it's sometimes diagnosed sometimes it's undiagnosed so even if you just carry on anxiety from your past life into your pregnancy and into entering motherhood that can definitely be a reason as to why you would feel um, low and uh, you know another symptom um, could be you know uh, uh, you know being feeling very tired um, and biologically speaking just those chemicals in your brain that I was talking about in previously that can definitely, you know, or even if you've just previously been um, depressed before getting pregnant and you're carrying on that depression um, to the pregnancy and then most likely going to be carrying on into the postnatal um, part of things as well. <music> So there isn't a specific timeline in which we can identify, you know, the duration of postnatal depression and anxiety. Um, it is very, very different for everybody. Each one of us, as I said before, have their own story, their own, um, you know, life experiences and their own way of um, coping, you know, um, with these situations. And depending on what reason has brought in, um, has brought on the postnatal depression and anxiety, you know, it could be trauma from birth, it could be um, a, a traumatic pregnancy, it could be emotional abuse from a partner, it could be anything, lack of self-confidence if it's emotional. If there is a lot of that chemical imbalance in the brain, then basically that's, you know, that needs to be addressed with medication. And that is already a great help that is going to, you know, boost 
up your recovery. Um, however, it really takes a different amount of time for each one of us. I went through my postnatal depression. It lasted for about two years. Mine was emotional based, so I fortunately, I don't think I needed medication. However, I could have done with a little bit of therapy. What got me out of my postnatal depression was just myself. I got sick of my own complaining. I got sick of the mediocrity, mediocrity, sorry, that I was stuck in in my everyday life. So I just decided that I was going to change everything in my life to uh, be reborn again and to you know, into, into the mature woman that I am now. So it really depends on what you are willing to do and the journey that you are literally taking on to, um, to recover from it. So oftentimes it's really hard to get the understanding and the support from family and friends uh, when going through postnatal depression and anxiety. It's a common struggle amongst all mummies who are experiencing this type of thing. And mostly uh, they seek the understanding and the support from their partners. And oftentimes it's not there because um, they are not able to understand, obviously, if they, have, if they have never been through depression, they don't know how it feels. They don't necessarily provide with the support that is needed or the, the support that sometimes we, us as going through postnatal depression seek from our partners. Um, this is very, very common and there isn't a straight answer to this question simply because everybody is different and every family dynamic is different. However, there are a lot of things that can be done to get at least the understanding um, from them, you know, and I mean, I'm not saying there are so many supportive partners out there. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones to, to have a very supportive husband. Um, and so I think the best way to explain what you're going through is to just say, look, I am not feeling like myself. I um, can sense that I'm going through a bit of a postpartum depression. This has been a massive shift for me. It's been such a change. I know there are, you know, a lot of hormonal changes and, 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 and chemical imbalances that go on in a woman's brain when they have a baby. So just bear with me because um, it's I'm going through a very rough time. I'm going to need extra support. I'm going to need extra care, extra love. And, you know, when you are using the right communication with your partner, then there is no reason why they shouldn't understand what you're going through. What we often do, uh, we make the mistake to let our um, depression symptoms take over and let out that rage, which is one of the symptoms of anxiety and depression and, you know, the nagging and we just expect our men to understand and to read our minds. So it's not like that. They don't understand it. You have to just sit down and have a chat and explain to them what's going on. And one thing I really want to point out uh, for this particular topic is that please don't expect your partner to do the recovery for you or to, um, to get you out of it because it's not going to happen. There is nobody else on this planet that cares more about your mental well-being than you. So you have to be the one to do the right things and put the right pieces in place um, for you to reach that light at the end of the tunnel. And you can do this with your partner's support. Don't expect him to do it for you because I know sometimes we, um, we expect a lot more than what they can give us. And just remember that it's a huge adjustment and a huge shift for them as well to have a baby. You know, dads can also go through postnatal depression and anxiety. So don't underestimate, you know, how much it impacts them psychologically and mentally as well. So um, let try not to be too selfish about it and instead talk about it and say, OK, what do I need to do in order to put in place uh, the right plan for me to actually get better and do it together? <music> So if you think that you are going through postnatal depression and anxiety, if you have a feeling that, you know, is it's it, that is not right, if you're not feeling like yourself, then the first thing to do, I suggest you head to your GP, you talk to them about it, and um, you try and get those first therapy sessions um, on your calendar, uh, and if needed, um, 
they will probably also prescribe you um, at your first session, they'll prescribe you some anxiety or depression medication, which is quite helpful to get rid of that fog. It's quite helpful to have that clarity to function on your day to day life. However, this isn't going to be enough for you to to overcome it uh, in at a reasonable time anyway and um, so I suggest that you put you, you pull out all of your inner strength all of your power of will to try and do as much as you can to, um, to for you to keep on track so uh, hiring a personal coach like myself hiring someone who has the right techniques to provide you with the right tools to self-help is a great thing to do and I'm not saying this because this is my job I'm saying this because it's that's what got me out of my postnatal depression and as I said before nobody else is going to actually help you as much as you can help yourself so with the help of therapy which can give you the right direction with the help of medication which can give you the clarity you know to function then you need to take it a step further and you need to um, put a structure in place in your daily life so that you can start doing the things um, that are going to basically help you be out of you know that um, constant pain and it will help you be in control of your journey. When you are in control of your journey, you are putting together all the pieces of the puzzle so that you can then, as I said before, reach that light at the end of the tunnel. And with this right formula and with this right action plan, because that is exactly what you need, is taking action in your everyday life and learning about what is it in your mindset? What are your beliefs? What are some of the values that are holding you back in thinking that you are not worthy to be a mom, that you are not confident enough and that you can't do it? Because all of these things are lies that your brain is telling you. So if you do the right inner work to grow that confidence and to, to grow, you know, as a woman, then you will be a perfectly happy and joyful mother for your children. So as I said, having that right formula in place is going to greatly boost, uh, you know, your, your, your recovery. And on the other hand, sitting doing your, your therapy sessions and um, taking the medication and then sitting, waiting for it to pass. I am so sorry, but that is going to take so much longer. And in most cases, you will be probably years and years taking the medication thinking then that's what making you feel better. In the long run, it's just going to be very detrimental for your mental health. So I'm not saying do not use the medication. I'm saying use the medication as a tool, but then after that, put some action you know, in place so that you can then work towards then replacing the medication with self-confidence, with self-worth and with, you know, um, a lot of that self-help that can work magic and a shift in mindset, as I said before. Um, there is no elevator taking you up the fast way, so don't sit there waiting in line. Um, there is step by step, there is um, bite-sized, you know, um, achievements and goals that you can, um, you can, you know, spread out in your everyday life and, and they can work wonders, good habits and, you know, healthy food and fresh air, all of these little things that strip off the layers of your depression so that you can get to the core. And once you work to the core, then you can move on and get unstuck from that place so that you can be a proud mom. You can live the happy family life that you deserve and that you probably desire. So I know it sounds... It sounds overwhelming, however, it's literally the right way to do it. And um, obviously, I offer a free initial consultation if you, uh, you know, are at the point where you want to take action. So um, I'm sure that you can find in the links my uh, my calendar and my 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 social media um, where you will be able to actually find me. Okay, so I I. Um definitely enjoyed those answers and thank you elena for helping me uh put this video together you are amazing i will leave her information below in the description and how you guys can reach her too she is a great coach she has helped a lot of women uh, go through uh, their fourth trimester and i really hope that you guys uh, enjoy this video please um, comment uh, and subscribe to my video. Let me know how 
you are dealing with postpartum and how you've dealt with postpartum, okay? Thank you.